Hello, I'm the Irish guy, and a few years ago, I did a video looking at every Premier League club's most unusual academy player, and lads, there were a few oddballs in there. Ah, sorry, they were children. That, that, that's mean. Oh, next, am I gonna start spitting a trick of treaters in the eye? No, but lads, today, I'm going to take a look at every Premier League club and find their one academy player who is... Unusual, strange, different, but definitely somebody you should take note of. Ah, this feels a bit creepy just researching kids. I feel like I should be sitting next to Holly Willoughby. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Ethan Waneri. Pretty simple. Ethan Waneri is 16 years old and yet played in the Premier League 18 months ago. He was 15. The youngest player ever to do it. Uh, we haven't seen one every since, so I think everybody's just forgotten about this ex-Chelsea midfielder, but honestly, I don't think we truly appreciated how nutty that was. 15 years old and making his Premier League debut against Brentford. At 15! What? So that's strange, but also there is a young Albanian centre back coming through at Arsenal whose first name, first name, is Maldini. Uh, no pressure, kids. Ask the villa Lamar Bogard. Harry Potter fans will tell you that there's nothing worse than finding a Bogart hiding in your cupboard. I mean, wasn't that the monster who takes on the image of your worst fear? In that case, open my wardrobe and you'll probably find a naked Susan Boyle. But for Aston Villa fans, I'd be a little scared that there's a Bogart in your under-21 team. Listen, I'm being mean, I know I am. And I'm sure that 20-year-old Lamar Bogart, a Dutch midfielder signed from Feyenoord four years ago, I'm sure he is going to be a quality footballer. But he is the nephew of Winston Bogart, one of the Premier League's worst ghost stories. This is the face of someone who probably terrifies football chairman. This is the boogeyman who you are terrified is going to bite off your face when you sleep because he, he was everything wrong with football 20 years ago. A Champions League winning centre-back with Ajax and a Barcelona star. Chelsea signed it from AC Milan, gave him a fat contract, but within two weeks of joining, Claudio Ranieri wanted this washed up lump of pudding to leave. And he didn't. He just sat there for four years, playing less than 10 times, and Shane was earning 40,000 pounds a week. I'm sorry, but 40 grand a week in 2001? He was probably living life like 50 cents. The club chucked him in the reserves and begged him to leave. <laughs> no, instead he just happily rotted like a gun off steak pie for nearly half a decade. I may be Prem's worst ever signing who earned 10 million pounds in four years, but I don't care. Listen, Lamar isn't winced, and this is completely irrelevant, but I don't know. Considering his family advice, then if I was an Aston Villa chairman, I would be scared to negotiate a fat contract with this kid because the last thing you want is a promising youth talent putting a deal. And then just choosing to eat pizza in the kitchen for four years straight. Bournemouth Balen Johnson, the most unusual Bournemouth youth player. 18-year-old striker Balen Johnson, who signed for Arsenal when he was five. Huh? I could barely walk when I was five. When I was five, I thought the moon was a floating potato in the sky. And yet this kid is beginning his career before he can even count past nine? Well, just turning up to work in a Teletubbies hoodie. But the wackiest part about all of this is that, remember Jurgen Klopp's first Champions League final, the all German affair in 2013? Johnson was involved in that match. He was a mascot at Wembley, holding Bastian Schweinsteiger's hand as they went on the pitch. Video, Hitchin Boy 7, mascot of 2013 Champions League final. I'm sorry, what? This is a Bournemouth youth player who once spoke to Frank Ribery before the biggest match in football. Before his eighth birthday party, he had already accomplished signing for Arsenal and participating in a Champions League final. Before I was eight, I barely mastered how to use the loo on my own. Do you know how many times my mom had to clean poo off the living room rug? What, I got excited watching Monsters Inc, right? Brentford, Romeo Beckham. How many Brentford B players do you know that have over 4 million followers on Instagram? He is someone who has seven times more followers than the actual club. Is Romeo. Is Romeo Beckham bigger than Brentford? I mean, there was a Twitter fan account made about him when he was 15 years of age. Beckham is bizarre. He turned 22 years of age this year. So why exactly is he still training with little kids? This is someone who obviously has superstar parents and so spent a year in Arsenal's academy, then gave up football for six years, instead of just choosing to play tennis in the garden. Yeah, um... Andy Murray was his coach. The bloke is constantly such a giant silver spoon wedged in his mouth. He probably sneezes yogurt out his nose. He then chooses to go back to football during lockdown and instantly gets sent up into Miami. He plays for their B team, joins Brentford, and yet he's still all over the frivolous gossip columns. Romeo Beckham splits from girlfriend Mia Regan after argument. Who cares? I don't care if Posh Spice's son is squabbling in the kitchen because someone forgot to eat cookies over the sink. The media don't treat him as if he's a Brentford B player. He gets One Direction treatment. He is the most famous player at Brentford and he's never even been asked by Thomas Frank to sit on the bench. Don't you all tell me he's not just a publicity stunt? The day I see this guy crawl onto a Premier League pitch is the day I eat a dog food sandwich. Brighton Lorenz Ferdinand. Brighton are the hipster club who like to scout unknown talent from across the globe. So, 
does seem a little strange that they secretly got the son of a football superstar in their academy. I had no idea that Rio Ferdinand's children were trying to make it in the game, but yeah. 17-year-old Lorenz is an under-18 Premier League and FA Youth Cup star for Brighton. As a rock and roll, Rolls-Royce, ball playing center back? No. He's a goalie. Huh? Although, like Romeo, the poor kid also has to deal with the baggage of the media trying to drum up gossipy nonsense drama. I was devastated. Kate and Rio Ferdinand reveal son Lorenz 16 has moved out of their home and is living with another family. He he's in digs. This article makes it sound like he's some estranged teen delinquent who's gone off the rails, now drinks vodka in his cornflakes, that he's now on the run from the police after throwing an old lady in front of a tube. No. He's just growing up. I'm looking forward to seeing how good this kid is, but goalkeeper? He was born in 2006, so yeah. The only real memories he has of watching his dad live is seeing that old man stick up the place of QPR, stumbling about like a pissed off Shrek. So to be fair, maybe that's why he doesn't want to be a center back. Burnley, Marley, Louis Lua. Okay, so there's a few footballing relatives in the Burnley youth setup, like Mickey Mellon's son and Adam LaFondre's second cousin. But I want to talk about Marley Louis Lua. I don't even need to see the 17-year-old child play football. He was in the Manchester City Academy. That is good enough for me. I already know that he's talented. What confuses me is that he's the under-17 New Zealand captain. But I'm confused why Louis Lua is carving out a career in football because his father, Kyle, was a superstar professional rugby player. His cousin, Thomas, was a rugby league megastar. His family are of Maori descent. So how? How did he grow up wanting to kick the ball rather than catching it? As soon as he told his dad he wanted to play soccer, surprised he wasn't immediately sent to boarding school, Chelsea Leo Castledean. Okay, we have seen the rise of the double barrel name footballers, right? It's a thing which has massively crept into the game over the last 10 years. Because I remember back in 2011, thinking that Alex Oxley chamberlain was an unnecessary mouthful. Now they all have names painfully longer than an insurance song. But right now, now we've got double barrel first names too. Like Chelsea midfielder Reese Alexander Russell Denny. Too many names, but he's not my pick to focus on here. No, my pick is Leo Castledy, who has had such a famous and privileged life. This is a child whose dad played in the Premier League for Wimbledon, and his mum presented homes under the hammer before Dion Dublin. His dad was in the Pink Panther film. He's also hosted shows on the BBC. I mean, his sister is an actress on EastEnders. Chuck in the fact that he's clearly a talented footballer who looks like a mini Grealish. He must have been the most popular kid at school. But it doesn't even stop there. Leo was also so good at rugby, and he was enrolled in the elite academy of professional club Harlequins. So, your parents are famous, your sister's on TV, you have both Chelsea and Harlequins begging you to join. He must have received 26 Valentine's Day cards every year at school. Me? I was lucky to get a kiss off my gran. You just know this kid was the most popular kid in school. Nobody is bullying him. What a successful family. Fair play, Leo. But, uh, yes. I am a little bit jealous of an actual child, Crystal Palace Kameki Eze. Look, I am excited to see how good former Cork City forward Franco Ume is going to be, but I'm just going to make you all aware that Ebraki Eze comes with a bro. We have seen with the Bellinghams and the Ramseys, they almost come together as a twin package. We all know who the better brother is, but we're also intrigued by the younger one too. There is a fascination with monitoring the careers of both Joe Bellingham and Aaron Ramsey, as there was with Torgan Hazard 10 years ago. But Eze is not alone. His brother Kameki is another talented, exciting playmaker in Palace's Academy. Nobody is talking about him much, but just watch. He's 20 years old, and if he grew up playing with his brother in the London Street cages, then... Just watch his skills. Everton George Pickford. This is bizarre. How many football clubs in the world have two goalkeepers with the same surname? Jordan Pickford has been an excellent Everton buy. A modern ball playing goalie who they snapped up seven years ago. I mean, there are still clubs like Newcastle United now who are still persisting with old-fashioned non-kicking goalies. So that club should be proud how they pounced on Pickford first. But the fact that Everton's under-21 team also has a Pickford in net. It looks like some weird form of iRobot cloning. His name is George. And is no relation of Jordan? Weird. Fulham, Christian Seclorak. So here we have young Fulham midfielder Christian Seclorak. Some Swiss under 18 international. Nothing too crazy here, right? Oh no. His career is weird. Four years ago, he was just a youth player in his homeland at Cervet. Then he gets snapped up by Juventus. Great move for the kid. Nothing too crazy, right? Wrong. This move was bizarre because five decades earlier, Juventus owner Gianni Agnelli had tried to sign this kid's great uncle, Dragasin Seklorak, from Red Star Belgrade. It's just the move was blocked by the Yugoslav state. It was a big thing. So the fact that Juve were finally able to get their paws on his great nephew, what, just using this child to prove a point? That they can sign a second rack? It's a bit like some vampire getting knocked back by some girl at school. So, um, 
90 years down the line, he gets a great granddaughter pregnant. It's all very weird. Liverpool, Carol Figueroa. Well, I do love the fact that there's a player in Liverpool's academy called Wellity Lucky. He might just have the greatest name in English football. I do like the fact that Lewis Kumas, Bobby Clark, and Jaden Dans are all the sons of random obscure footballers from 20 years ago. And I also do feel like I'm just stuck in a time warp when I see that one of the players in Liverpool's under 23 team is, um, 35 year old. Jay Spearing. Someone who always looked like a potato with eyes. But no, the most unusual academy player. It has to be Carol Figueroa. Lads, the likes of Kumas and Dance. Their dads were in the Reds Academy. They just never made it. Figueroa's dad had nothing to do with Anfield. Maynor Figueroa was a bang average defender for Wigan. And although, to be fair, he did cram in nearly 200 caps for Honduras. This guy only actually retired two years ago. The only thing I ever remember him doing in his career is, to be fair, Scoring a goal from his own half against Stoke. One of the greatest prep goals of all time. And it's just no one remembers because he's not David Beckham. But 14 years ago, Roy Hodgson actually did try to bring him to Liverpool. Launching a £5 million bid. But Wigan said no. Oh. Okay, the, the Anfield dream was dead. As soon as this man saw Paul Konchesky be unveiled at that club instead, he must have felt like his heart had just melted into a soggy banana pie. Yeah. Look where his son is now. Eight years after Maynor's move collapsed, Liverpool signed his son from Dallas. When that Figueroa move collapsed in 2010, when his son was three years of age, when he was no doubt crying in the kitchen, fantasizing about pulling out the Wigan chairman's tongue, to think that that toddler eating Lego in the corner, watching banana in pajamas on the telly, would be the one to finally realize the family dream? It's madness. Figueroa is the 12th most capped footballer of all time. But his son, has no interest in playing for Honduras. He's instead representing the United States. His dad is one less Captain Buffon. But no, he has about as much interest following in his daddy's footsteps as he does eating a fried leprechaun for lunch. Maynor Figueroa's son scored 90 goals in one season for the Liverpool under 14 team. If I was Maynor, I'd be demanding a DNA test for my wife. What's even weirder is that he played with Jason Kumas at Wigan and now both their kids are teammates at Liverpool. It's so bizarre. Luton Town, Jake Berger. I like Luton's development squad. Only for the fact that the Argonne win the prize for having the poshest name in English football. Their 20 year old goalie is called Jameson Edward Alexander Horlick. Kind of, I get the feeling that it's written into his contract that he has his own private butler to feed him fried macaroni and crab on the bus. But they've also got arguably the least posh name in the squad. Promising young midfielder, James Burger. What a name. Considering he comes from the Burger family, then I'm glad he's not become addicted to eating Mackey G's on the couch every day. Man City, Jalen Heskey. Well, I do like that Manchester City have a goalkeeper called True Grant. I do I get the feeling that someone just leant on the keyboard and deleted a few letters from an old school true Geordie rant. Ozzy, all that name is missing is an E, an O, an R, a D, an I, and an E. And suddenly I'm watching Night Ranger being called a melt. But no, to me, Manchester City is a club which required the best young talent in the world. But there are a few peculiarities in there. Anyone remember Sam Sodger? A very average journeyman centre back for Brentford, Reading, West Brom, Charlton, Watford, Leeds, and Portsmouth. Four Nigeria caps. I don't blame you for forgetting him. It'd be like me castigating you for failing to remember what your mum had for lunch in June 2008. I don't know, I bought a broccoli and hatred for my dad. But uh, yeah, this bloke, someone who was sent off for putting Josie Baxter in the groin, where a newspaper report suggests that he got himself sent off intentionally for a £70,000 payment. I'm not saying that I believe all that. It's just weird. Anyway, his son Ty has been in the Man City Academy since 2015 as a highly rated striker. What with Erling Haaland, Liam Delap, and now Ty Sajay? What is this about Manchester City strikers being so much better at football than their dads ever were? But that should make you all very excited for Jaden Heskey, son of Emil, who, don't get me wrong, was a pretty decent striker for Liverpool back in the day, but was a mostly bang average meatloaf who had forgotten how to score at practically every other club. Honestly, growing up at school, Jaden's school friends will just have known him for having a dad that was bullied on the internet by KSI. Heskey was a bulky target man who had the pace of a constipated snail. But how strange that his son is actually a pacey winger. He also has a younger brother, Regan, in the Man City Academy too, being coached by the youth development boss, Brian Barry Murphy. Even his dad was a famous somebody Arguably the greatest GA sportsman of all time. Roy Keane's hero in Cork. This isn't even about the Heskey family. This is about how Manchester City, arguably the best run club in the world, are unearthing gems in their academy. Supposed future world stars whose dads were just Alf Inja Halland, Roy Delap, Sam Sodge, and Emil Heskey. What next? In 10 years time? Is Paul Dummett's son going to be lifting a golden boot at the Eddie Hat? Man United, Ethan Ennis. Okay, a weird one screaming at me in the face. Is that Tom Huddlestone plays for Manchester United's under 23s? He's nearly 40. But no, the most bizarre one to me is Ethan Ennis. 
a promising 19-year-old winger. The strange part is that he started his career at Liverpool, moved through the ranks at Anfield, and then in August 2021, switched to Manchester United, becoming the first player in 57 years to do that. He even rejected a new deal at Liverpool. Oh, I don't know. Ennis. Steven Gerrard is a man who told Gary Neville that there's no way he'd make that move because it would have ruined his family's life. Well, I don't know. Liverpool to Manchester United. There is a reason why he was the first one to do that in nearly 60 years. Newcastle Carl Heffernan. So here we have a young Cork centre-back Carl Heffernan who plays for the Newcastle youth team. Nothing strange here. Ah, no, 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 there is. Listen, both his parents, Rob and Marion, were Olympic runners. His mom is fifth in the all-time Irish record books for the women's 400 meters. His dad is one of Ireland's greatest ever athletes, appearing at five different Olympics. And really, he was also on Dancing with the Stars. Now his son plays for Newcastle. Sorry, are we 100% sure this guy doesn't have Superman genes? Not only does Cahill play for Newcastle, but they signed him from AC Milan. What? Just months after he made his debut for Cork, he was training with Atalanta, Juventus, Roma, and Milan. What? Nottingham Forest, Keaton Willows. It's just a cool name, isn't it? Sheffield United, Zach Giggs. Yep. He's that Giggs. Just like I was shocked to find out that Rio's son is a brighter. Did anyone have a clue that Ryan Giggs had a 17-year-old son in the Sheffield United youth teams who plays as a wing back? I feel kind of sad for this kid. His dad is a legendary footballer, yes. But ever since this child was five years old, his dad's name has been in the mud. Ryan Giggs has not been a media darling since 2010. So growing up at school, with your dad's name covered in a toxic cloud of drama and family sludge, that cannot have been easy to deal with from the buddies at school. Genuinely. Zach Giggs has my sympathy. Yeah, as a teenager, you can be prone to embarrassment from your parents. But I'm sorry, forget about your mum calling you sweetie in front of your mates or giving you a teddy bear when she picks you up from school. No, imagine your friends getting hold of a newspaper which has published a full-on romantic poem from your dad featuring lines like I love you more than all my public appearances, which is a lot. Poor Zach. Tottenham Pele Arganese McDermott. There's a couple of great names in the Tottenham you'd set up, like Iago Santiago and Dante Casanova. But the best one. Step forward, Pele Arganese McDermott. I'm sorry, his first name is Pele? Actual Pele? His parents clearly never even gave him a chance. I feel like the parents of Zidane Iqbal. When you give your son the name of a ghost, he's not exactly gonna grow up to grill hamburgers for a living. As soon as you name your son Pele, you were almost inadvertently telling him to get a football, go outside, and get good enough so you can buy us a new house in 20 years. He's a young Spanish defender, born in 2005. He moved to England when he was four, and came through the ranks of Luton Town. Well, lads, imagine going to school in Luton with a name like that. As soon as he turns up for footy training, he has to be good. Imagine a Pele who can't control a Ball? The poor kid has had pressure on him since he was born. Best time, favor for one me. Favor for one me. Favor. I've never met anyone called F Favor. <laughs> What a brilliant name. Wolves Justin Hubner. Justin Hubner is surprising because he's a 20 year old centre half, born and bred in Holland, has been at Molyneux since he was 16. He's yet to make a single appearance in club football and yet already has seven full Indonesia caps. The guy was playing for the Netherlands under 20 team only last year and he's since played in the 2023 AFC Asian Cup, helping Indonesia reach their first ever knockout stage. To be fair, he did score an own goal against Japan, but. So? He is an absolute anonymous unknown Wolverhampton Wanderers youth player suddenly stepping foot on the same pitch as Tommy Yasso, Endo and Kubo. Just wow. For a boy yet to play a single minute of competitive men's senior football at club level. This is a wild start to his career. Anyway, that's the game of Let me know. What do you think? Let me, let me know. Okay, what do you think is the most wacky, unusual academy player that your club has? Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.